The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jessie, travel across America and around the world preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you Brother Ford. I want you to meet me in Holly Grove, Arkansas, July. We're going to be there from the 16th to the 20th. I know, I know y'all don't do five night revivals no more. We're going to have a real old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival where devils are cast out, sick is healed, deliverance is raw, winos, junkies, prostitutes, pimps going to get set free because the power of God is coming to Holly Grove, Arkansas. July the 16th through the 20th, we're coming to Prayer House of Faith with Pastor George Cunningham, and we're believing God's my first time ever coming to this little city, this little country town, whatever you want to call it, but I want you to know this, the mark of God is going to be on Holly Grove, Arkansas, July 16th through the 20th. Call a neighbor, call a friend, come on, drive on out of Memphis, Missouri, come on down to Holly Grove, amen, and let's get into a move of God where the glory of God will visibly manifest in our midst and remove burdens, destroy yokes, set the captives free. Mark your calendar right now. Put in your reminder that's July the 16th through the 20th in Holly Grove, Arkansas. Amen. The prayer house of Faith Church. We'll be there. The address is on the screen. So make sure you make plans to be in the house. You don't want to miss this one. I, uh, just reaching out to the Lord. The Lord began to deal with me uh, maybe an hour ago. Faith, hope, and patience. Three elements, three ingredients, three building blocks for victory. Victory is that achievement, that overcoming. These three so these, building blocks, these three elements, these three constituents uh, to, to victory is going to be your faith, your patience, and your hope. Now, faith is in the Bible, you know, 248 times. Patience is in the Bible only 34 times, but it's vastly needed because faith and patience are like power twins. So we bring hope along. Now we got we got the, the triplets to get us to victory. Now, the word hope is in the Bible 129 times. And uh, God began to stir my heart. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, um, chapter 6. I start at verse 10. God really began to stir my heart about the people of God and losing their hope. People of God, amen. How many know the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that hope deferred makes the heart sick? Now understand this, if faith is in the heart, got to understand this, and faith is the substance of things, what? Hope for, and then hope gets deferred. Now see, you like it when your student loan gets deferred. But you don't like it when your hope gets deferred. When your hope gets deferred, it makes what? The heart sick, and then it's with the heart that man believes. Just like it's hard to operate with a sick body, it's hard to operate with a sick heart. So the enemy has sought to frustrate you in your expectation area because think about it. You know the old proverb that the old country folk came up with? Blessed is the man who expects nothing for he shall not be disappointed. Well, he ain't going to receive nothing either though. See, you got to understand that people today have been robbed of their hope. So we want to kind of correct that as we go on tonight. Verse 10, for God is not unrighteous. You got to get that drilled into your spirit, not just in your head. God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love. Remember how you did things just because you love God and you love people and you gave of yourself. You poured out yourself. And now the devil want to tell you you did all that for nothing. God didn't let you down. You been, Look at you. you look where you could have been. Look how much money you could have had. Look what you could be doing if you hadn't done all that. The devil's trying to make you disdain the seed you sow. Because God's about to multiply that seed. Hallelujah. And the harvest on that seed is going to make you want to do it all over again. 
He said, God's not unrighteous to forget your work. He's not going to forget your labor of love. Well, if you have show, here it is, toward his name. See, that's where that name was stuck in my spirit today. In that you have ministered, and you know you have, to the saints, and yet you do minister. But how many know it's hard to minister with a sick heart? It's hard to minister vexed, frustrated, and grieved, and your mind's going crazy. And the folk that you're ministering to no, don't even, ain't never heard of reciprocity, and you feel like it's all in vain. You feel like you're dealing with selfish folk. Why? In the beginning, you didn't care whether it was selfish or not. You was focused. The devil has tried to distract you, but I came to restore your hope tonight. Amen. The Bible says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of what? Hope to the end. Now, I want you to understand something, um, that you be not slothful, but what? Followers, imitators, protégés of them who through what? Faith and patience. So you see right there, we got the full assurance of hope. We got faith and we got patience. How, what do we do with that? We inherit the promises. So the enemy know if I can take either one of these components out, then see God put faith in you the day you got born again. Faith is embedded in your spirit. But faith come by and hearing by. Well, hope comes the same way. We get hope and comfort from the scripture. But the devil knows I can use circumstances to rob you of your hope. And you still got all the faith you had before you got robbed of your hope. But since faith is the substance of things hoped for, then if, I, if there's no hope there, faith has nothing to undergird. Faith is the foundation for the thing that I anticipate, the thing that I expect. And I, um, I'm about to go different than I want to go already, but that's all right. We're going to keep flowing. For God, who made promises to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, surely blessing, I will bless thee and multiply, and I will multiply thee. Now, when God tells you that, your faith just expanded. But also your expectation, your hope is release and so here he is after he had what patiently endured see God spoke a thing that stirred up his faith activated his hope and then his patience came in and he was able to calmly endure he was able to hold himself at peace hold himself at calm everything looked like it's going down around but now I got faith hope and patience working together devil I shall not be moved and you got to understand when we don't realize that we need these three components together you take one of them out the equation and we lean them but come on we're going to pull that drawstring and keep them all together now and the Bible says says here that after he had patiently endured he what oh my god it came to consummation he obtained he gained he laid hold to it he received he partook of it he manifested the promise he manifested the very thing that god said now uh just for your for your reference uh where i get this word from the first time hope is used in the bible is in the the book of ruth chapter one verse twelve and it, the, the scripture is separate. Somebody, she don't believe she ever get a husband. I don't. That's not what I'm after. I want you to show the first time the word hope was used. That's where it came from. The Hebrew word for hope here is what I want you to get a hold to. It's the Hebrew word tikva, t i q v a h. Amen. Tikva. Literally, it's a cord. I want you to understand. Remember, I told you that because the Hebrew uh, words are in pictograph, every Hebrew word has a picture. So the picture of tikva, a hope, is a rope. Hope is a rope. Hope, and, and, and it's a cord. Amen. It's a cord that binds together. So you got to understand. That's why the enemy wants to take your hope. It means expectancy, expectation, the thing that I long for. Don't that sound like Mark? What things, whoever you desire. Desire when you pray, do what? Believe that you hope for. See, that desire binds me. It binds my expectation and my confidence to get it together. Wraps around my patience to stand for it. Now you see the process of faith. That's why I haven't been able to stand. I stand. Why? I'm standing with expectation. I'm standing with confidence. And I'm standing with calm endurance. Because the God that can't lie said it. So therefore, it's got to happen. So it's a cord. My hope is the cord that binds my faith and my patience and my expectation together. So what I'm going to say, take hope away. What happens? Everything unravels. It unravels, see? And the enemy has been working on your hope, trying to take your hope, trying to take the aspiration and the expectation, the anticipation away from you. But it ain't going to happen to you tonight. I want you to understand that. And tikva comes from kava. Kava is a measuring cord. In other words, now a measuring cord well, you know, you can go buy, amen, a measuring rod. You can go buy a tape measure we're more familiar with. You can buy you a 10-foot one, a 16-foot one, a 25-foot one, a 30-foot one, or a 100-foot one. So it's a measure. 
How far does your hope extend? How? See, the enemy is trying to cut off, but you got to have a hope. Your hope has got to extend to the end. Hope is anticipation, expectation for a future thing to come to pass, but it's based on a promise. It's not wishful thinking. It's based on something that God, who cannot lie, has said. And then it gets even greater when he said it directly to you. Now I've got hope because God, who can't lie, says it. And then I got faith because faith comes by hearing. So I choose to meditate on what God said in the midst of all this mess that's telling me it ain't going to happen for you. And that's where my patience comes in and undergirds my faith. I said, all right, I'm going to hold you up. I'm going to hold you right there. Faith, patience holds my faith. Faith holds my, my expectation. And expectation wraps everything together. And now I'm wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. And get the devil and the world can't do me no harm unless he can get my mind to drift out there. Unless he can get me to get my mind on some lie. Hallelujah. And I came to tell you tonight that you are the child of God and you don't follow the voice of a stranger. It didn't say you wouldn't hear it. It just said you're not familiar with it and you don't follow that voice. You came to follow the Lord Jesus and it's time to put your foot down, put your hands on your hip, let your backbone slip and tell the devil, zip his lip, pack his grip, take a trip because you're here to stay. This is your land or wherever your foot tread. God has already given it to you. So I am trying to get it. It's mine now. Title and deed. Faith is the substance of things so far. And my anticipation right now is for nothing less than God's best. Nothing less than the revealed destiny, the purpose that God told me. So what? It didn't happen in 2017. It didn't happen in 2016. It didn't happen January, February, March, April, May, and halfway through June. But devil, I came to tell you it's happening right now. And you're going to see it soon because I'm not about to give up because I found out that three ingredients to V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory. That's my cry. Come on. Let the mocking know. Hallelujah. God said it. He can't lie. Therefore, I believe it. And I refuse to have a nightmare. Do you understand that the devil tries to give you a spiritual experience through a nightmare? Okay, you don't believe it. Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. May, 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 I hope it ain't been lately, but remember the, remember the nightmare you had and you woke up drenched in sweat and your, 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 your air conditioning was on 72. Hallelujah. And it wasn't nothing but 80 degrees outside. But you woke up, amen, totally drenched in sweat. Hallelujah. And your heart was racing and you ain't never left the bed. Come on here. But that nightmare was so real, it gave you an experience. Now, now psychologists call that a spirit spiritual experience. I call that a soulish experience. Here's why. Because doing that whole thing, your spirit was trying to calm you down. And it was your spirit, man, that finally woke you up and you awoke. And we're like, what? I know that picture right there. This, this is my bedroom, right? Eh? What? <sighs> I thought I was about to fall off a cliff, man. I was like, oh, shit. Jesus. Now, what would tell you it was so real, it affected your body. It affected your mind. Your soul and your body were affected. But it was your spirit that pulled you down. And the devil's trying to do the same thing to you while you awake. Well, I'm going to get a hold of hope that's going to bind me to faith. It's going to bind me to my patience. It's going to bind me to my confidence in God. It's going to bind me to the word that God has already spoken to me. Uh, let's go to Romans 5 right quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I want you to see something here in Romans chapter 5, verse 4. Uh, Romans chapter 5, we'll look at verse 5. Because I want you to catch this because I'm going to take you somewhere. We're going to go and do this thing. Uh, Romans 5 and 5 says, and hope maker not ashamed. They ever told you I ain't going to get my hopes up. Don't get your hopes up too high. You done been disappointed one. That's why I'm going to let God bring hope to him because I don't want to be hurt. That hurts. That, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. I mean, you'd be sick all on the inside. It ain't just your head. Come on. But you got to let the devil know, uh-uh. Hope make him not ashamed. God said my people should never be ashamed and hope don't make me ashamed because see, we're not talking about a, a hoping and a wishing. I'm talking about an expectancy that came from God that's a cord that binds me, that holds me steady, that holds me when it looked like I'm defeated, when it looked like I'm going down, when it looked like I'm in quicksand. There's a cord that holds me, and it's anchored to the Word of God, and that cord is made of the Word of God. My hope came from the Word of God. I want you to catch this now. Go to Romans chapter 8. Mm -hmm. In Romans chapter 8, verse 24, I want you to see something here, because hope is going to be your rescuer. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 24 says this, for we are saved. We what? We are saved, we delivered, we're rescued by hope. But hope that is what? Seen is not hope. But what a man seeth, why does he yet 
hope for. What am I talking about? The thing that I see with these eyes is not what I'm hoping for. But the thing that I'm hoping for is the picture that's in my spirit. Remember, the Hebrew words. Every time God speaks a word or a letter, he speaks an image or a picture. I mean, it's really true in the natural in the English. If I say car, you don't see three letters. Come on here. You see your Hugo, your Hugo, whatever you're going in. Come on. You, you see your 200, your 300, your S, whatever, your Maserati. You see your Mazda. Come on here. You see something. That, you know, you see a picture. If I say cat, you don't see C-A-T. Come on here. You you, you, you see Fluffy. Come on here. Uh, you, you know, you got to understand every time God speaks a word, he's speaking an image. Why? Because we are created by God to function according to our inner image. Watch what the devil tries to do. He tries to make you function according to a mental image, an imagination that he puts in your mind. But God wants you to meditate on what he said so the image of God grows up in you bigger than the picture the devil is trying to paint in your mind. Why? Because when you stay focused on that image, it keeps you focused. Your hope keeps you wrapped up. Your patience undergirds you. And your faith in God is going to bring it to pass. Your faith is going to go out and get the thing. If you ever disengage your faith, you got to keep your faith engaged. Because once you, God spoke to me one time. He said, son, you know why you don't have your harvest now he, on this particular seed you sown? And this seed was like 10 years old. He said, because you got more focus right now on your most present seed over the last two years. He said, you disengage your faith from the seed you sowed 10 years ago. He said, the seed you sowed first is more apt to come to consummation than the seed you just sown. But I can't bring your seed to pass. I can't bring your harvest into fruition without the force of your faith. Because it's your faith that draws things into manifestation. He said, son, in my arena, everything is already done. You already got the car. You got the house. You got the tent. You got the boat. Whatever it is I told you. He said, because when I speak it, amen, it is. Watch this, watch this. God in the book of Genesis created seed, right? And he said the seed, in the seed was the tree, right? And when you read Genesis chapter uh, 1, it said that it was so. But how many know it wasn't so in the earth? Wasn't nothing in the earth. But God just said it's so. How do I know it wasn't so? Because when he put Adam in his body, all of a sudden, God planted. If it was already so, he wouldn't have planted. And what he planted wasn't a tree because he made it grow. If it was already a full-grown tree full of fruit, he would just transplant it. But no, no. See, in God's realm, it's done when God says it manifests just that quicker. But on our end, because of the hope of what God said, the faith in what God said, patience waits on it to manifest. And we got to come to that place where we begin to realize if God said it, it's done. It's settled in heaven. I got to establish it on the planet. I got to establish it in my life. And I cannot be moved by the time frame. You got to understand something. The devil has never created anything. The devil, I call him an old school copycat. But watch this. The monkey sits back because he sees something you didn't see. When God, why do you think the devil got us bowing down to the idols? And when I say, oh, you know, that's the narrative. I know, I hope ain't nobody in this room bowing down to no idols. Come on now. But you got to understand. Sometimes, you know, I don't know, because sometimes your job is your idol. Huh? Sometimes your ministry is your idol. Your ministry, your office is your idol. But I came to tell you, why does the devil do that? He can't do it without, how I many know you do what you see inside of you? You go out this door right now and go to your car. I guarantee you, you're going to get in your car based on what you see. If you you see yourself going, amen, out this door and going around the front of your car to the driver's door, you're going to do it. When common sense would say, go the back way because the driver's door is on this side, you get there first. But you don't operate like that. You operate by how you see yourself on the inside. So here's what the devil did. You know where the devil got there from? To, 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 to manipulate that? God put that in you. But how, why, where did the devil get it from? He sat back and watched what God did. God walked out, a man created a man, right? In his own image, in his own image, in his own image, in his own image, in his own image. I'm trying to plant you in his own image. God created a man. But then, a man, uh, 2,000 years later, two days later, on the eighth day, God came down and formed the body of the man. And God breathed what? The breath of life, the spirit of life. Let me say it like this. God put God in the image. And the image animated and the image became and the devil said oh that's what I'm going to do I'm going to take me a little image I'm going to take me a little image and I'm going to tell them psychologically that when you take this image and chant over it God
God is going to get in this image. And then whenever you take this image, it's going to bring good luck. You take this image, you're going to win at the crap game. You take this image, you're going to be able to put a hex on somebody. You take this image, you're going to be powerful. Why? And then Paul came along and validated and said, the image is nothing, but it's the demon behind the image. It ain't God in the image. It's a demon attached to the image. But I came to tell you inside of you, the image of God is in you. You were created in the image of God. That's why God wants you to operate according to your inner image. Because your inner image is God. Greater is who? He. That's why in you. Your image inside of you. Is the, that's why your words are not for conversation. Your words are for creation. You got to understand your words. You talk so much because you just conversated. But if you ever understand my words are for creation. The Bible said the words were what? Framed. How? By what? The word of God. Your world can be framed by your word. What are your words? Homologous. Amen. Saying what God said. When I go in the Bible and I hear what God said, when I learn his voice and he speaks to me in my prayer closet and I come out saying, my name is Abraham. Boy, you old. Boy, you barren. Boy, you impotent. My name is Abraham. What am I saying? I'm saying I'm potent. I may be impotent in the natural. I may have, some of you might have impotent faith, but I came to tell you God to drop one word that'll bring potency in your faith. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go and go to Romans chapter 4. Let's go ahead and go to Romans chapter 4. I'm trying to get you to understand, boy, Psalm 39 and 7. He said, what I'm looking for, my hope is you. My hope is in you. My expectancy is in you. My cord is in you. Romans chapter 4. Let's roll it to verse 16. Ah, let's just go. The Bible says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the what? Faith of Abraham, who is what? The Father of us all. How as it is written. Don't you ever disconnect from your Bible. I don't care what you lose. Don't you lose the passion of getting your word. Don't you lose the drive to read your Bible. I don't care if you read your Bible with tears in your eyes. If you read it looking like it ain't happening for me, read it anyway. If the devil message you, read it out loud. Hallelujah. I have made thee as it is written. Find out what God said about you in the Bible and declare it like he told it to you personally. I have, not I'm fin to, not I'm going to, not I can, not I shall. I've already made you on God's end. You are. I don't care how the, you, listen, I don't care where you at. On God's end, you're a champion. On God's end, you are victorious. On God's end, you are the victor and never the victim. On God's end, you always win. You got to see yourself a winner. You got to make a decision. I cannot be defeated. Therefore, I refuse to quit. I ain't throwing in the towel. My game would not be forfeited unless the enemy forfeits it. I'm in it to win it. And if I'm in it, I'm going to win it. Why? Because I already won it because God said I'm the winner. Huh? I have made thee what? A father of many nations. Behold him. Before him. Before him. Before him. Now I know this is in the Greek, but in the Hebrew before is Penin. I had Sister Lord to come here and preach on Pene. Pene literally means right here in my face, face to face. So now understand this, before him whom he believed, in other words, my intimate relationship with my covenant God is, how, how the devil going to get between this and my nose? He can't get there. It's me and God. When you stay, that's why the devil tries to steal your time, frustrate your wife, so you will back up and put some space between you and God, meaning there's no intimacy in this relationship. Intimacy is based on fellowship, and when fellowship is broken, the relationship becomes vulnerable. But you got to let that monkey know now you ain't getting my fellowship. Uh -uh. Me and God gonna case shabata. Even who? Jehovah, Jehovah, Yud Hey Vah, Yahweh, God, who does what? Quicken up the dead and does what? Call up those things that be not visible, will be not present, be not yet manifest. What? As though they were already visible, already manifest, already present. Remember, what I see, I don't hope for. It's the thing that I see that I haven't seen. It's what I'm hoping for. So God quickens the dead and calls those things that be not before these eyes as though they were. But when he called the thing, he put it in my spirit. 
spirit because I am a spirit and in my spirit I got it. In my spirit I see it. In my spirit I possess it and if I hold on to that hope and let that, let that hope wrap me tight with my faith and bind me with my anticipation and bind me with my patience all of a sudden manifestation has got to come and when I stay focused like that with this three days, three months or three years, it really don't matter because I'm bound to it. I'm tied to it. I can't get away from it. I cannot be distracted. You got to understand if I can't be distracted, it can't be retracted. The devil can't take it. He can't repo this. Why? Because God calls things that be not as though they were. That's why you walk out that prayer room feeling like, give me a jawbone and thou. Bring me a thou. I'm going to bust some head. I'm going to crack some skull today. Why? Because I saw me cracking skulls on my prayer knee, on my knee bones. I was cracking skulls in my praise chamber. I was cracking skulls. In other words, a thousand coming against me, they was in trouble because one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. If three will make a hundred thousand run and five will call the nation to bow down. Plus, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and he whooped 195,000 in one night. So I ain't messed up about nothing the devil comes against me with. Why? Because I'm focused. I'm focused. But if I ever get distracted, what the man say? Alas, Master, what shall we do? Listen, beloved, this Prophet Ford, I want to invite you to meet us right here at 9101 Lou Drive, July 22nd, 6.30 p.m. We'll be back in another old-fashioned Book of Acts, Power Pack, Holy Ghost, Move of God. I want you to be here, be a part of the studio audience, but I want you to be here to encounter God. I believe we're in a season where God is granting God encounters for the hungry. Amen. No more just coming to church, throwing up my hands, going back, wondering what's going on in my life. I believe there's a visitation for you, and I want you to meet me right here so you don't miss your visitation. That's July 22nd, 630, 9101, Lou Drive in the city of Little Rock. God bless you. Well, praise God. Welcome to Camp Meeting 2018. I want you to make plans to join us for Camp Meeting 2018, August the 6th through the 10th, right here at 9101 Loot Drive here in the city of Little Rock. Special guest speakers every night, mo Monday morning at 10.30 a.m. Apostle and Pastor Woodrow Parker from El Dorado, Arkansas will be our morning speaker and he'll be right back that evening at 7 o'clock. And then on Tuesday, Kathy Dorsch of Commission Fields Ministries will be here for 10.30 service and she'll be right back Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And then on Wednesday, we crank it up. We got the teachers first and then on Wednesday, we're going to that preacher, Apostle John Bearden out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas from Oasis Ministries. He'll be here at 10.30 Wednesday morning and then oh my God on Wednesday night all the way from Pine Bluff Arkansas the prophet Willie Lee Edwards Jr. the pastor and founder of the International House of Praise will be our 7 p.m. speaker and then on Thursday we got a double header for you we went all the way to Jonesboro Arkansas and we've got Bishop Norman Timmerman and his lovely wife, Sister Maritha. She will be the morning speaker at 1030 and then that trumpet blowing Bishop Norman Timmerman will be right here on that 7 p.m. on that Thursday night. And then the climax, I always be the anchor man. Yours truly will be your 10 a.m. and your 7 p.m. speaker on that Friday the 10th. Make plans to meet us at Camp Meeting 2018 right here in the city of Little Rock, in Jesus' name. The uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries, Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's Word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.